something going on here that's not ideal, but I think I've got an acceptable fit and we can put it back together. I got one more thing to do. I'm going to clean out the uh, clean out the 0.4 millimeter part of the nozzle. This wire is just under that 0.39. This is a piece of music wire from my hobby shop, RadicalRC.com. Get this to change over to English. And it's uh, 15 thousandths. So this O15 wire is just ever so slightly under the size of the nozzle. So I'm going to use the uh, propane torch here, and I've got to be very careful. I don't want flames that I can't see licking around here and ruining the insulation on this sensor. And I want to heat this block, not the wire, because the wire will go red hot and soft and bend really easily. Look at there. That's all it took. Push that wire through. And we'll bring it around here. And pull off whatever's on the wire. Just in case there were an actual piece of debris in there, I wouldn't want to pull the wire back through the nozzle and re-snag the trash in the nozzle. So. We're all cleaned out now, we can reassemble. I know this seems like a lot of time spent on this, but I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. <laughs> I ordered some uh, little uh, heat sinks, aluminum heat sinks, designed for a FET, and they're like 8 millimeters square, and I'm going to drill a little hole in them and screw them to this surface here. This is the block that gets overly hot in a long print. It just builds up heat and eventually is unable to do its job. Um, so there's other things that I have in the works to improve this even further. Here's my finished nut. I have it fitting well now compared to the nut that was there. So we have aluminum which transfers heat much more readily and a lot more surface area than that little hex nut. The little steel hex nut. So this should be a nice improvement. This in itself may be just enough to make it work stably. But something tells me that I won't be able to help myself and I will make further improvements and enhancements. It's hard for me when I'm making something uh, to not apply everything I can think of to make something as well as I can figure out how to make it. So we'll be pulling heat out of this block because this aluminum will be pressed against this flat surface in here and we'll be pulling it out of the stem because we're when we tighten this will be so thermally well connected to all of those threads now when I get my special uh, silicon uh, thermal paste and I coat all this stuff I'll put it in the threads also that way that all of the metal will be in contact through the uh, thermal paste uh, with all of the aluminum. Now, it's hard to get things to fit together so that all surfaces touch because of tiny imperfections and such. And the paste is designed to transfer heat. Um, it's almost like, uh, you know, certain things you touch, like if you touch a hot block of wood, it doesn't burn you, but if you touch a hot block of aluminum or steel or liquid, it does burn you very readily because some things transfer heat better than others. And that's what this special paste is designed to do. So when I get the paste, I'll be able to make things even better. And the idea is the paste will make this hotter, so it'll pull more heat out. Uh, this is a piece of metric hex stock that I purchased. I want to say it was, I don't know, 4 or $5 for a foot of it. And now I have a custom part that replaces that nut. So... It's, it, to me, it's, it's, it's like magic when I have an idea in my head 
and I'm able to convert it into a three-dimensional object that solves a problem. So hopefully my little wheels that are in here that drive the plastic will not interfere with the top edges of this nut. And there's a little bit of a wiggly misalignment problem installing this. So hopefully this will not interfere and I'll be able to get the thing together. And we'll try it out. Here's my uh, temperature sensor. It gets plugged in here. And this is the 12 volts that drives the heating element. Now you may have noticed that that was loose. I'll go ahead and tighten that up now. That's a fairly close fitting hole that it's installed in. But yeah, it definitely is true that these have all these are all metal heads. They just need better cooling. So we'll keep working on this possibly and keep improving it. Um, I may not install my V6 uh, E3D head if this continues to work well. Uh, but then again, I did spend 80 some dollars on it and I sure would like to use it and see how much better it prints. Let's go get this on the printer. Here we have our toothed wheels that drive the plastic. They go down between the two wheels. This wheel floats. This wheel is driven by the stepper motor. And I've noticed these teeth have a little bit of plastic in them from slipping on uh, the gray filament that I had in it last. So I'm going to do a little cleaning on those. Kind of an awkward thing to reach. I would love to uninstall this. There we go. Finally got my big mitts in the right place. I removed the fan from the hot end unit. I want to see how close the uh, heat sink nut that I made comes to the wheels. Wow, it looks like we got nice clearance there. That turns freely. That one turns freely. I could have maybe made it another sixty thousandths tall, but that's, that came out pretty good. Considering I made no attempt to measure that, I just kind of eyeballed it. I thought this would be good to show this view so you can get an idea of how it works. Here's a good Here's a good view of how it works. That white tube right here is where the plastic goes down. It goes through that little black block you kept seeing on the circuit board, through the wheels, down into the hot end. We'll get the fan installed and see how she runs. Here we go. We are successfully printing. The last time I printed something with this printer and it, the nozzle clogged up, it made an object that looked like very coarse steel wool. So the real test will be after it finishes this job and cools down, will I be able to restart it for another job or will it fail again? So if, it, if the stem stays cool enough that no plastic melts and sticks within it, um, then we will have solved the problem. Now, I've also adjusted my printing temperature. I was printing at 230, and I now have the plastic temperature at 215. I have an interest in uh, getting the machine to run properly for a while. So I'm actually making a, a number of changes here to try to resolve the issue. And here we go. Nice to see some real progress on the way.
think so. <laughs> you could have grabbed at her, but she would never come out. <laughs> Dumb on little girl. You can do it, Julie. It's not that far. <laughs> no, I mean, she makes other jumps. Here, that here. Are... take this box. Put this box up there, kind of across the shelf. For... A little closer now. Oh, we can oh. we can jump down now. I would just lay it on the shelf. It's just something a little closer. Yeah. Lost kitty cat stuck in the rafters. <laughs> That's a big jump. I don't know. Just don't touch me. Help me, but don't touch me. <laughs> Help me, but don't touch me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.